things, crazy things happen sometimes. Uh, and these are just some uh, model sheets that I did for Scar, where you basically have to explain yourself to other animators because you don't anim you won't animate every single scene with Scar, so you do these model sheets, which I, I this is the kind of stuff I don't enjoy doing, to be honest with you, because you have to think logically. I'd much rather just animate a scene and rough something out the way you feel about it, but this is really trying to show what this thing looks like from any angle, you know, and it's, it's work for me to do this model sheet. It's, it's, it's important though. You know. So now I was going to get to some artists here and bring to your attention. These are, these are guys who I look up to, who I just think uh, they inspire me on a daily basis. One of them is actually a German artist who you might have heard of. His name is Heinrich Klei, K-L-E-Y. And his, st his stuff, you can study for years and years, it doesn't get old. And you always find this stuff in it, whether it's motion or the way he defines anatomy. He's just an absolute master. Uh, when I was living in Germany growing up there, I had never heard of this guy. Uh, he's pretty much unknown in Germany now. Uh, maybe that will that'll change because I think there's going to be an exhibition with his work traveling through Europe, uh, starting soon. But um, I remember going to an international bookstore in Cologne and finding these Dover sketchbooks. There are two books with the sketches out. And uh, I mean, my head was just exploding. I thought, who is this guy? You know, uh, Because what he basically does is the same thing that what, that what, what Disney was trying to do, basically make, or trying to make funny situations that seemed impossible and make them completely uh, plausible. Like if, if elephants could ice skate, then that, that's what that would look like, basically, you know. Or if a woman would dance with an alligator, that's what that would look like, you know. And he makes it com completely plausible and logical, an absolute master. So, so it was um, Disney artist Joe Grant who um, had some of these copies of these uh, sketchbooks, and he showed them to Walt Disney, I think, in the early 30s, mid 30s, and Walt loved this stuff. And um, so he was kind of an influence on Fantasia. I mean, you can see, you think of the dance of the hours. There actually is a scene in Fantasia, if you remember, when the hippo dances with the alligator, and the, the hippo, I think, runs into the distance, and then comes flying on top of the alligator, and it's exactly that pose, exactly that. So, I mean, you know that these guys at Disney studied him and uh, liked him. And that's not all. Um, the Walt Disney family actually owns sketchbooks, original sketchbooks by, by this artist, who have not been published, who have never been published. Uh, they, they belong to, to Walt, and of course they're, they're with his daughter. And we had access to those books uh, one time at the studio. We asked if we could borrow them and, and, and at least make copies of them. And uh, we had whole conference rooms full of storyboards with his work. Just amazing stuff, and I hope somebody's going to publish them sometime because they're all treasures. Again, just look at the mm. fantastic draftsmanship, uh, uh, the staging, and you know, there's just nobody like him. <laughs> or even something like this, just the, the flow uh, and the action, you know, and the knowledge of anatomy is almost frightening. It's so thorough, uh, and yes, and yet he's very playful with it. It's not, uh, um, it's just, this is really solid. I love stuff like this. <laughs> and it just looks so plausible and real. Um, even, I even like this background here. This is a nice, it's really a nice animation. A key pose, somebody getting into a shirt, you know. It's beautiful. This is one of my favorite, a little scene in Holland <laughs> with Dutch elephants. <laughs> Some more skating elephants. Mm. And then more fantastical situation like this. But even though this is a dragon, it doesn't exist. This is all based on studying real animals. I mean this is a real knee, elbows, paws, you know, it's all it's all from very thorough study. Uh, this one is called this one is called the pod in the act. <laughs> Just beautiful anatomy, and even just quick sketch studies like this are just dynamite. Very confident artist. Then the other guy I was going to bring up here is one of my favorite. Um, well, he is my favorite animal 
caricaturist. His name is, uh, they call him T.S. Sullivan. I think it's, it's Thomas Serling Sullivan. And uh, he's also somebody who, whose work you can look at forever and uh, it's, it's always fresh. Uh, he had a way of, um, he, had, he has an inventiveness in his drawing and a non-formulaic way of uh, cartooning animals that is just absolutely stunning. Um, he, the, I mean, the way he would be able to be really simple with something like that and yet be very detailed when it comes to the texture. Uh, this is an absolute master. This is one of my favorites. I have an enlargement of this in my, in my house, like a giant size poster. I just love looking at it. It's called The First Wedding Breakfast. <laughs> Adam and Eve toasting and all the animals. I mean, you, every single one of these is just a gem. You know? Just absolutely inspired. I love that little monkey. Yeah, he said, one, one too many. <laughs> but him too, he's just like enjoying it, you know. Yeah. Cheers Eve, cheers Adam, you know. <laughs> it's just absolutely wonderful. And he did a lot of themes with Adam and Eve and uh, also Noah's Ark. He did a whole series of uh, Noah's Ark stories. And they're all great. All great. Oh, what a fantastic snake. And this, he's a guy, the old Disney artist also studied. I mean, you go to the archives and you see drawings done for Robin Hood or even earlier Disney features, and you're going, that, that character looks like a Sullivan drawing that I saw way back. So they had their clip file too of these kinds of things. Genius, sheer genius, look at this. It's called When Stripes Are in Style. <laughs> Sort of a very gentle sense of humor, but an absolute uh, mastery of the animal form. This one is called The Infectious Yawn. <laughs> you, just, you just want to go in and animate this stuff, and it's so juicy, you know, and so unique. Yeah, I wrote a few more because I thought you would find it. It's just isn't that, a, isn't that a great character? It's just rich. And the little pig with a little <laughs> feather, you know, very, very 20s, 1920s. Yeah, they, these were done uh, between, most of his work would be 1900 and 1926. I think he died in 26. So I thought, uh, this is a few year, years ago, I thought, what if I apply his sensibilities for cartooning to some of my zoo drawings that I've done? So I went back into my sketchbooks and translated them into sort of Sullivan-inspired animals, and then these things would happen. <laughs> and stuff like this. Aww. And then you do something anthropomorphic like this just to play around. And then you add a little color to so have something. This one I call Food Fight. <laughs> <laughs> And then occasionally uh, I get a little fanciful. Well, the actual painting is hanging right right there, and so I'm going to show you right there. Mm -hmm. I can just try something that's a bit more organized, that has a uh, like a moment, like a story point to tell. You know, just just before the contact. You know, I wanted to, to capture that moment. This is a finger painting I did a few years ago. Uh, I've been to Africa once on safari. This was in the year 2001, and uh, when I came back, I thought, gosh, all these impressions, all that fantastic stuff that you've seen, you don't want to do nice, pretty drawings of animals, you want to do something raw. So I just saw the paint there and just put my fingers in it and smudged this, you know, together. So I thought I wanted to do a few more like this in time. This is a watercolor of a tiger study. This would be what I call this marital dis dispute or something like that. <laughs> He's a big size thing. Um, and then this is a Chinese artist. His name, I, I always have to write it down, Liu Chi Yu, who I also think is not very well known here. But Don Han brought me a book when he was in China a few, a few years ago. And these are some pages out of that book. And I thought he was um, amazing. Um, there's not much I could find out about him. Um, online, but apparently he was, uh, he lived in China all his life, but he was a fan of Western art. 